the the intelligence that the game was played out. We played hard. We skated hard. We finished checks. So did they. But I thought it was a smart game. We we didn't self inflict. We didn't try to generate more than was there. Both teams will probably say in their game that they liked, for the most part, the defensive part of their game. There there wasn't long stretches of zone dominance. There weren't long stretches of high uh, quality chances. They got a flurry at the end of the second. They actually had a couple at the start of the second, end of first, sorry, then at the start of the second. And we kind of did the same thing. But both teams then are going to look, how do, we, how do we generate more? How do we get more time in their end? How do we create a little bit more without opening their game up? And I think that'll be the challenge tonight, right? It just means at the end of the day, just skate faster. Usually, usually works. Uh, any lineup changes? Yeah, Lombard comes out to illness and Lorenz will go in. And uh, with Lorenz, you talked about, as, uh, with the depth you guys had, that he was one of the guys from the group competing for one of those yeah. spots, how much he was able to elevate his game. Just what have you seen from him as of late that helped yeah. him get to where he is? It was kind of uh, two seasons for him. We got healthy and stayed healthy, and he was out of the lineup at the time. And, and, and it was fair because the players in the lineup were playing exceptionally well. Then he got his chance to come back in and he, he changed the narrative on his season. He certainly opened the coach's eyes <clears throat> fast and physical and on the puck. And really that was the player that our pro scouts and the people that signed him thought this guy's capable of this. So, But we'll give Steve Lorenz credit for all of it. <clears throat> it wasn't some great coaching. He, he just he stayed in the fight when he wasn't playing and he worked his butt off. And, and when he got back in, he made the most of his chance. And then we get post trade deadline and I've got five healthy guys, you know, six healthy guys for, for three jobs. So we rotated people in and out and by the time we came to game one, we started the way we started but Steve had never then, like he wasn't off the radar on that. He was, that was a, a pick em call for me and so he comes in and he gets his chance and he should be excited about it. I mean, he had to fight through a lot um, during the stretch too, like the one game where he was really sick. I mean, what did yeah. you kind of say about him to kind of fight with the Fight through all that to kind of prove right. there. It says a lot because, especially when we're talking about players that don't have a five year deal, they have the opportunity to become disenfranchised. So they thought, you know, we signed him, hey, great opportunity in and out of the lineup when guys got healthy. And then he had a long stretch where he just didn't play. And, and for a lot of people, and I would say maybe myself included, be, you know, I'm going somewhere else next year, right? Like, like, for him to do what he did, to stay in the fight, stay in the fight, come to practice hard, work hard every day, you know. He asked the coaches, you know, what can I do to get better? But he wasn't banging on the door every day. Like, he, he respected the entire process of it. And then he got in and he played, and the guys really appreciate the fact that you get sick. Like, we didn't – it wasn't necessarily a warm and fuzzy place for him in terms of us holding his hand. He made the decision not to quit to work his butt off to get better and stay ready for an opportunity. He didn't play in game one. He was wired and let up in practice and chirping and, and bringing energy to practice. So he, good on him. He made the decision to give himself another chance. Any other questions for Phil? Just one last one. Um, having the, the depth that you do on your team and having the trust in, in every guy that's out there on the ice, do you find that, I mean, I know Reinhardt and Barkov obviously played a good amount of minutes, but do you find that you're maybe able to have a little bit of balance as far as ice time and, and yeah. who you put out there and kind of being able to balance like that yeah. aspect of the game? Some of the balance comes from the other team too. they got to get real good fourth line, and you want to be comfortable when your fourth line comes out, but you would have seen in a couple situations right side D zone draws when their third line was on the ice, Stendhal's line came up. They do have an awful lot of faith, and it makes sense. You know, Paul's a very strong face-off man, and he's on his strong side. It makes a lot of sense for Stendhal to go out there, but I had faith in that line and what they're capable of doing. Um, Stenland's a, a complete player for us and a critical part of our penalty kill. Nick Cousins spent the vast majority of the playoffs last year in the number two line, so we have good players on our fourth line. And that allows – and it, it's not just me saying – the players all know so the first line knows how good the fourth line is, or the second line. And, and they respect the fact that they're on the ice doing a hard job and doing a good job, and they want them out there. So it brings a nice balance to your bench. Last question. Well, last year you dealt with a lot of cap struggles before the postseason. And for, for this time around, 
How great is it to have that depth that you don't even, even though Charlotte is starting their postseason, yeah. how great is it to have those guys like a Gadjevich and even an, a, a Pozo in the lineup that you can just put them in if needed, even even before yeah. relying on black aces? For every team in the NHL, it's going to be very difficult to replace anybody in kind of, let's say, your top eight or nine guys. You, you can't, maybe, maybe more accurately, your top six guys. But then you get to a level where you don't notice a talent drop off when somebody comes in and out. That's a really, really good thing. So the next player that I put in, whether whether you know it would be either Okposo or Gadjevich, when they come in at the lineup, it doesn't change the way anybody thinks about our team. They're going, oh, good, because he might have a great game, right? He's he's fresh. The mentality of the players that you bring, in, the way the players are viewed when you bring them in. If you're if you're reaching down and and. You know, we did last year. We, we got into our sixth line, our seventh line at times. By the time we got to the final, it makes you a little tighter going into the game when you when what was your fourth line is now half your second line, right? So you get, it makes you it forces you to play a more perfect game, and the further you get on, the harder that is to do. Thank you, coach. Okay.